Jack, we recently talked about Fusion. Yes, that was we fun. Did. It was. Yeah. yeah, people liked it a lot. You know, my people, we astrophysicists, that we're all about Fusion. Just want you to know that. Yes, yes, you guys, you really stick together. <laughs> that was good. I'm sorry. That was not. That was, uh, that was awful. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, the... Just so you know where we're coming from, every single star in the universe that is sort of alive, alive in a, in a stellar sense, is undergoing thermonuclear fusion. And that whole word that you can parse it, thermo is heat, that nuclear is the nucleus, and fusion is the bringing together of, of nuclei. And it happens that when you bring in the quantum physics and the into the periodic table of elements mm -hmm. and you slam these nuclei together, mm -hmm. you make heavier nuclei that are missing some mass. And, a and that, an atomic mosh pit. <laughs> and, and the mass has become energy. Right. So that's, here's what's here's what's interesting. So just, cool. So cool. Here's, here's what's interesting. Yeah. Just just I think it's interesting. But you 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 and the Viewers, listeners will be the judge of this. All so right. watch. We lay people. You've heard, you've heard of nuclear fission. Of course. This is where you take a big atom, such as uranium or plutonium, as we've done in the past. Those are big atoms, all right? 92, 94 protons crammed into its nucleus, okay? And that's like the opposite of hydrogen, which has one proton in its nucleus, all right? So the hydrogen we use for fusion and make heavier elements, and fission, we take the big elements and split them apart. So you split them apart, you get other elements when you add up their mass, it's less. And you get energy from that. And this is the foundations of the, the nuclear fission arsenal. The bombs used in the Second World War right. were fission bombs. Okay, so now watch. Well, if splitting an atom gets you, splitting heavy atoms gets you energy, mm -hmm. and fusing light atoms gets you energy. And, right. Well, then, what's going on? Is there some point in the middle, right, where does it know if you split it or fuse it, what can happen? So here, here's what's going on. As you fuse atoms, you get less and less energy out from the fusion. Mm -hmm. as the atoms get bigger. As you split atoms, you get less and less energy out for having split them. Okay. Okay? Gotcha. All right. All right. So it turns out there is a place in the periodic table of elements where that element, if you split it, it absorbs energy. And if you fuse it, it absorbs energy. Oh. oh, so you can't fizz past it and still expect to make energy, and you can't fuse past it. The buck stops there. Wow. And that element is iron. Iron. On the periodic, on the periodic table of elements. See, if this were a Marvel movie, we would call it absorption or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> We must get the element absorption <laughs> so that we can stop this reaction and save the universe. Yes, it would, it would stop all freaking reactions. Correct. Wow. Correct. You, you cannot fizz iron. You cannot fuse iron. Okay? So this effort to undergo nuclear fission, to undergo nuclear fusion, has a stopping point. All right. So stars are born with hydrogen and helium, and they start fusing, and they work their way up the periodic table mm -hmm. up at, in mass, okay? So th the sun, as other stars will do, they start in hydrogen, they make helium. Right. And then they take three helium atoms, bring them together, and you get, oh, well, let's figure it out. Uh, helium has two protons, mm -hmm. okay? So you take three of those atoms, how many protons do you have? Three. A uh, helium uh, atom has uh, two uh, protons. No, you, got six, you got six protons. <laughs> you got six protons. <laughs> six. Okay. And don't tell me I went to public school, so I don't know. <laughs> okay. By the way, I went to public school, K through 12. So, um, so two, two, and two, then you have six protons. You go check the periodic table of elements. Who has six protons? Carbon does. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. So, 
uh, we go from hydrogen to helium, there's carbon in there. There are other pathways that get other elements, exactly. but these are the primary ones. Okay, so you get to carbon, then you get nitrogen, oxygen, and so there's a, there are these fusion pathways that work their way up the periodic table. Uh, and at each step, uh -huh. the sun is making energy. Right. Okay? So the sun can hold itself up against gravitational collapse. Gotcha. Because it wants to collapse. This gravity is, a, let, I'm going to make this sucker as small as possible, but the fusion is saying, no, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. Right. I'm preventing that. Okay? So there's pressure without and pressure within. And Correct. The, so the pressure pushing out is the fusion actually propping up the sun in its size and creating- That's a perfect, perfect phrase, propping up the sun. That's exactly what it's doing. Wow. Correct. Now, there are people who misinterpret this because we say it is balanced. Right. Okay. You know the star is ba the sun is balanced because it's not shrinking and it's not expanding. Right. Okay. Here's an interesting fact. It is balanced as a ball would be at the bottom of a hill between two hills, mm -hmm. not balanced as it would be at the top of a hill. Right. These are two different kinds of balance. Absolutely. So at, at the top of the hill, you can just barely balance it and put it in what we call equilibrium, but it's an unstable equilibrium. That's an official term. I love it. Unstable, because if you just breathe on the marble, it'll fall down the hill. Right, right. Okay, all right. Now, the ball at the bottom of the, between two hills in a trough is also a, an equilibrium, but it's a stable equilibrium. If you blow on it, it'll go up the side and come right back down to where it was. Right. Stars are not in a delicate balance. They're in a stable balance. Okay? Mm -hmm. So watch what happens. If you compress the star, the star gets hotter, creates more energy, and puffs itself back up. Oh. If you, figure, if you somehow manage to puff it up, that releases the pressure on the inside, the nuclear fuel uh, 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 energy rate drops, and then it shrinks back down again. Look at that. It, it's, it's, there it is. Stable equilibrium. That's wonderful. It's, it's a totally wonderful thing, yeah. especially if you have long-term civilizations that you want to sort of... Yeah. Uh, if you're, if you're going to be a civilization that is smart enough to use that power and energy... <laughs> <laughs> then you have a stable source of power that is always working and you don't have to worry about it being unstable because it's in a state of stable equilibrium. But, you know, that's kind of, I mean, who could ever do that? That's ridiculous. Yet another public service announcement from Chuck Nice. Okay. All right. So watch what happens. So Go there's ahead. the star. And it is, and there are more details that we have time to get into here. But the star is cranking its way up the periodic table of elements. And each of these new elements creates a, an onion skin layer in the center of the star. So there's um, the outer layer has the hydrogen and helium and carbon. And because the sun is only hottest at the center. Right. And it has to be really hot to fuse the bigger elements. Yeah. Because I need more energy, more temperature higher speeds to fuse helium than I did hydrogen. Because helium has two protons and two protons. There is more resistive force there than one proton and one proton. If I want to fuse carbon, I got six protons and six protons. So it is the, the, the center of the star gets hotter and hotter and hotter to, in order to make this happen, okay? Wow. I run out of, let's go back. I run out of hydrogen in my core because I made it all into helium. Right. Okay. I'm not hot enough to fuse helium. I'm not. So how do I ever end up fusing helium? I ran out of energy. What does the star do? The star says, gravity is time for gravity to win, and it, the core collapses. Right. Increasing the pressure, increasing the temperature, until helium kicks in. Look at that. Then helium ignites, stabilizing the star once again. You run out of helium in the core, and carbon's sitting around doing nothing. Okay, time for the star to collapse. Gravity says, time for us to win again. Carbon says, not so fast. You have now raised my temperature so that I can fuse. Oh. And so, at stopping the further collapse. Okay? This is, this is, the, this is the, the dance yeah. that stars do with their thermonuclear fusion in their core. So now watch. Okay, here's the fun part. I now get to iron in the core. 
And the star says, we've been down that road before. Right. Right now, right now you're not giving us energy. Let's collapse right. under our own weight, increase the temperature, then you'll give us energy. And then you will fuse. But you then will fuse? Iron says, ha ha, and pulls off its mask and says, it's me, <laughs> absorption. Ha ha. <laughs> so, so the star collapses, ready to for iron to give it new energy. And iron says, no, I absorb energy oh. to fuse. Uh-oh. And so now the star, which is in the business of making energy, has a fuel source in the center that is only absorbing energy. So the star collapses some more. And Iron says, I will take anything you give me, and any heavier element is going to absorb it as well. Mm. And so the star undergoes a catastrophic collapse. Catastrophic. Within hours. Oh, this wow. is a star that's been alive for millions of years. Holy millions God. of years. And within a matter of hours, it's a catastrophic collapse. And in that collapse, the temperature goes to astronomically high temperatures. And here you have this ball of astronomically high temperatures in the collapse, and it only knows one thing to do at that point, and that's explode. It has to. because it, it has to. It can't fuse. It it's can't got no other choice but to it's explode. To explode. And Chuck, thus is the appearance in the universe of a supernova explosion. Mm, better known as a several billion year orgasm. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, those stars don't live billions of years. That's... They went through this fast, okay? Only the highest mass stars oh, really? have enough have enough pressure to take the temperature to That's get right. you to iron. That's the right. sun is not, will never the make it to iron. The sun won't make it because, okay, the... it's not big enough. Because you need you need the pressure without and the pressure within. And it has to be a big enough mass, not big Correct. enough in size, but it has to be a large enough mass for that. Oh my God, that's amazing. It's amazing. So the gravity creates the pressure and the temperature, and it's the temperature that matters because temperature makes the particles go at high speeds to right. overcome their, their exactly. repulsion. Exactly, that's so the that only the way you can get to the fusion. This the is fusion a so that the strong nuclear force takes over. You gotta get over that hump, exactly. then it sticks, that's right. So amazing. So this would have happened in millions of years. Right. Uh, the sun will live billions. Some stars live trillions. These this special category of high mass stars doesn't live very long. Ten million years tops. Wow. Okay? They go to iron. They create this onion layer of elements. They explode and they scatter that enrichment across the galaxy, allowing newly born stars in stellar nurseries to have planets made of ingredients that are not just hydrogen and helium, made of planets that have carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, the basic ingredients of life itself. That is, that's beautiful, man. We're not just poetically stardust. We are literally, literally stardust. Stardust, correct. It's beautiful. And, and what I say is we're alive in this universe, yes. But... Think about the universe contributing to who and what we are through this process of thermonuclear fusion from hydrogen all the way up to iron. And those stars explode. If those stars didn't explode, the universe would have all those elements locked up with nothing to make planets and people out of. Right. The fact that those stars explode, the fact that the ones that make the elements explode, allows me to tell you that not only are we alive in this universe, the universe is alive within us. Oh, that's, why do I feel like I want to take up an offering right now? <laughs> that, that was just gorgeous. The collection plate yeah, is going I just want to right. pass the plate now. This, that was just beautiful, man. I mean, that's just wonderful. <laughs> and this was figured out by four scientists, uh, Burbage, Burbage, Fowl, Fowler, and Hoyle, uh, Jeff Burbage, Margaret Burbage, uh, Willie Fowler, and and Fred Hoyle. Burbage, in the 19th... Burbage, Fowler, and Hoyle. <laughs> Bur <laughs> Bur Burbage, Fowler, and Hoyle. Um, and they really deserve the Nobel Prize for that. But back then, they weren't giving them to astrophysicists, as they are today. But I'm just saying, that research paper came out in 1957, I oh think it was. Oh, my God. How, how soon? How, I mean, how, how, how recent? recent? Right, right. 
Right, mid-century. So this this understanding of our place in the universe, yeah, this yeah. cosmic perspective, yes. I think of as the greatest gift that astrophysicists have given to civilization because it, it borders on the spiritual for its meaning and significance and our, and our connectivity to the cosmos. It really does. And it's such an elegant picture of a closed system where dying stars seed the universe with life itself and the building the blocks ingredients for life, the, the base. building blocks for yeah. for that mm -hmm. life it's it's, it's uh it, it really is just a a lovely just almost metaphorical depiction but it's literal it's, at it's the same literal time depiction. that's Correct. that's Correct. that's amazing that is that's so true. i just wanted to complete our fusion right, so, session together okay but see is it really complete because now i got to know this because as you talk about this kind of explosion and these, uh, you know, elements leaving and then going into these stellar nurseries and then this system starts again. Now I want to know, how does the whole thing get kick-started? What happens that causes the entire thing to kick off in the first place that ignites that first little spark for the fusion? I, I deeply value your insatiable curiosity. That's why I love you, Jack. Well, I appreciate it. Uh, and I love you because uh, you, you have answers and I don't have to read. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This has been another Star Talk explainer, uh, fleshing out the whole story of fusion, not only on Earth, but in the universe. Chuck, always good to have always you. Always a pleasure. Neil deGrasse Tyson here. Keep looking up.